Welcome back, folks, to WWE Network and Chill. I'm Graham G.S. Matthews, and right here on the show, I break down all the original programming that I watch on the WWE Network. For the last number of episodes and a few episodes going forward, we're reviewing Season 1 of WWE Total Divas. Today, we're talking about Episode 12, Season 1, Seeing Red. So this was a really, really good episode for some serious stuff, from some silly stuff, for things that were just so stupid that was funny, and from some serious issues that you might find some uh, life lessons in, including the first storyline of the show with John Cena and Nikki Bella. So the last that we saw these two in the previous episode, uh, John had just recovered from his elbow surgery, and he then asked Nikki Bella to sign a cohabitation agreement, which basically says in so many words that if anything happens, that you have this many days, this amount of days to vacate the premises, and Nikki feels offended that he doesn't really have all that much confidence in their relationship, that he would have to ask her to do such a thing, and whatever else. I can kind of see where he's coming from. I could see where she's coming from, too. I agree with John, but that's just me. So we follow up on that angle from the last episode, Nikki basically asking herself, will I ever have a permanent spot in his life? Does he think that it's going to be temporary? And I think from John's perspective, he doesn't think it's going to be temporary, but in the case that it is, you never know. It could be something that Nikki does that that John wants out. You know, it may not be necessarily that something that John does where he thinks he's going to fuck up. He might think that Nikki's going to fuck up or vice versa. Who knows? You never know. So, but she's asking herself, will I ever have a permanent spot in his life? So she talks to Brie about it and she doesn't really agree. She's like, yeah, that is kind of stupid. How disrespectful, whatever. Will it be forever? And she also talks to her mom and she's a bit more Bree's like, oh yeah, not like he didn't call her, he didn't, she didn't call him like an asshole or anything, but she's like, well, that's so stupid, blah, 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 like typical, like sister talk, but she talks to her mom about it and she makes some, a couple of great points and she says, you know what? It's probably based off past experience. He want, he was once married, they got divorced, it probably didn't end well. So that's basically what, you know, that she tells him and I could not agree more. That's exactly what it is. He got divorced after marrying his high school sweetheart. He probably thought it'd be a perfect marriage, and it wasn't. It ended three years in, and he doesn't want to go down that road again, which is why he doesn't want, <clears throat> which is why he doesn't want to get married and why he's asking her to sign this cohabitation agreement. So you can't go wrong there, and she makes a great point. So two points. Uh, two points to Gryffindor. Two points to Mama Bella for her great logic in this argument here. So Brian misses the weekend with Bree, and that's the other storyline of this show. Uh, where Bree gets a little mad about, you know, the fact that Brian's also on, uh, he's always on the road, which I kind of alluded to in the previous episode, but he's got to miss a weekend home with Bree and Josie because he's got to do more travel and media and stuff like that. And Bree talks to Nikki, so she's seeking advice from Nikki now, about John, because obviously John Cena does the same exact thing. He's gone all the time. Nikki says, you just got to suck it up and deal with it because he's putting food on the table for us. I know that, you know, obviously they're divas too. But, you know, that he's just got to do that. He, that's just him. He's got to, you know, do what he's got to do. He just got to accept it after a while. And then it gets even worse. So Bree's out to lunch with Brian, with uh, Daniel Bryan, and he has to walk out of lunch on two separate occasions, and Bree gets pissed. Now, she's got to be more understanding that it's for work, and he can't just say no because he's got to do these media calls and whatever else. Um, but she gets really, really mad about this, and she only gets mad when she feels like she's been disrespected. And she goes, I want to date the Daniel Bryan from the beginning, from when we begin, when we first started dating many years ago. And he's like, the less successful Daniel Bryan? And he, again, he makes a great point. He's making more money now than he ever has before. It's not really his choice. He just got popular. It's not like he said, adios, old lifestyle. Um, it's not, he hasn't really changed. It's just the fact that he's more popular and he's more notable now than he ever has been before. So she should, she should just be happy for his success, you know? So again, Bree and Nikki talk it over. They talk everything over. And Bree says, I feel like I just don't exist anymore. And, uh, Brian apologizes. He says, I will make some more times. That's pretty much it. Um, so John says, am I a super evil person for doing the, going back to the whole John Cena and Nikki Bella angle here. He says, Am I, you know, what if you ever, you know, what if you turn into a super evil person? Again, it's, it may not be something that he does that causes the, that causes the rift in this relationship. It might be something that she does. So you never know if she's going to turn into a super evil person. So again, he makes a great point. It's not that he doesn't have confidence in her. It's just that based off past experience and not that, not to compare Nikki and his ex-wife because they're two very different people, I'm sure, but you never know what might happen. People are people. I'm not going to say women are women. Guys are guys too. People make mistakes. You never know what's going to happen. So I feel like he's absolutely in the right to do what he's doing. 
And he's a family man, and um, he just wants to make it up to us. They make up and whatever. He wants to be a family guy. and all right, Not the show, but you know what I mean. He wants to be a family man. And he feels like he can only really do that if she signs it. And Nikki Bella says that we're going to have sex every day. So congrats to John Cena for winning at life. Not only winning all of his matches, but also winning at life. We get to our next storyline of the episode with Vinny and Ariane. Cameron, basically. Our AK Cameron. Where uh, they can't have... Speaking of sex, perfect segue, or perfect segue. That uh, speaking of sex, it's not going too well for them. Just because Ariane is hurting every single time they have sex. And she said it hurts. So, could do without the fact that Vinny says he has a giant wong. I uh, could do, absolutely do without the fact that he says he has a giant dong. So, I, I could very much do without him saying that. Um, but, yeah, he, he, you know, she brings up the fact that it's been a while since they, had last, since they last had sex because it hurts so much for her. And it's not really Vinny's fault, but uh, she has to go have an exam. She seems pretty fine. She doesn't really get answers, which was kind of a waste. So they go to sex therapy instead, which to me just sounds dumb, but if you, you got to do what you got to do. And she suggests more get a vibrator, some more role playing, all this other kind of stuff, which again, you should could have figured it out herself. She's trying to figure out what's going on because it hurts when she has sex. Whether it's because John, or Vinny has a giant penis or not is pretty much irrelevant. I guess sex therapy, I don't know. Maybe they're finding other ways to get kinky without doing it. It. What are they doing? It, according to Chris Jericho. So anyway, Vinny buys some sex toys. They have fun. Great for them. So we go to our final storyline of the show again. One of the most... It seems like Eva is always involved in the most consistently entertaining storylines on this show. Just for how bad it is and how stupid it is, it's hilarious. So Eva trains with TJ, Tyson Kidd, to get better. And Natalia gets super, super, you know, uh, super jealous about this. And Natalia gets pissed, especially when he says, I'm going to go train with her again. Yeah, not behind Natalia's back because he tells her, I'm going to go train with Eva. So he goes to train with Eva at the performance center. Nikki, or rather Natty, to get even with T or to get even with Eva. Even with Eva should have been the name of this episode, not seeing red, but uh which I guess is also pretty appropriate because Natalia was seeing red a lot during this episode in terms of just being absolutely angry beyond uh beyond justification. But anyway, so to get even with Eva, she starts to train with uh, TJ, with, uh, not with TJ, with Fandango to make TJ jealous. And TJ is like, what the fuck are you doing? This guy has his shirt off. It gets really, really awkward. They fight at the PC. Uh, Natalia fights with Eva. She's like, Natalia, you're crazy. Like, we're not doing anything. He's just helping me get better. So Natalia gets super jealous. They make up and that's it. So that's pretty much like the whole theme with this episode is that everyone they fight, they make up, which is pretty much a common theme throughout the entire show. Not only season one, but the entire show. Specifically the Bella Twins. They always fucking fight and they always make up regardless. I know that's how sisters are, but it seems like every single episode they fight and they always make up anyway. <laughs> so regardless, that is episode 12, seeing red of season one of Total Divas. So of course, the next episode of the show will be covering, as you could probably tell, episode 13. So stick around for that in the subsequent episode of WWE Network and Chill. We got episode 13, 14, and I think 15. I think there's 15 episodes in total of season one of Total Divas. And then beyond that will not be season two of Total Divas. That's coming down the line. Uh, the remaining episodes of WWE Network and Show will be covering another show on the WWE Network. So stay tuned for that in the coming episodes of WWE Network and Show. So until next time, guys, I'm Graham G.S. Matthews. Have an awesome one, and I'll catch you folks down the road.